nice here if you want. If you like our video, press the like button. And you can even share it with your friends. And if you have any questions, comment down below. And if you like the channel, subscribe to the channel. Finally! Adios! Adios! So, we'll do right here. This is kind of a thick spot that laid over. So what we're gonna do, just kind of feel the top. It's crisp, it's good. And if I take it like this and I just bend it, it kinks right over. That's what we're looking for. I mean, even the bottom's pretty dry. Yeah, this part's a little, little damp right there. So, good comparison. So like this, right here, doesn't really rattle very much. That rattles a lot and it's crisp. Not crisp at all. But when we flip it over with the rake, we'll give it a couple hours and then we'll be able to bail it. So, I think that's what we'll do. Let's, uh, Go ahead and close or open. We'll open this more. Oh. There we go. All right. real thick I want to check it make sure it's not too wet so this is still wet like damp so it's definitely we'll rake this part first Oops. so we'll rake this up here first and then what we'll do is we will uh, go rake everywhere else and then this will be the last part that we bail that way it gives it more of a chance to dry. What is this thing? And exactly what does it do? There's actually lots of things that this is, but we know it is a wheel rake. This one specifically is an eight wheel rake and it's a V eight wheel rake. So basically what it means is this row of four wheels comes down, this row of four wheels comes down, and as you're driving forward like this, it collects the hay and pushes it into one pile. But it does more than that. So not only does it collect that hay and put it, in, and put it into one pile, but it also takes that hay and it flips it. So underneath of a windrow, like we showed earlier in the video, oftentimes it's wet because the hay itself is too thick for the sunlight to really get through and warm it up and dry it. This wheel rake will take it, it will flip it over and bring that bottom side up and allow it to get dried by the sun or the wind. The other thing that this does is, if you look, so over there you can see how close our windrows are. Over here if you look, notice that they're almost twice as far apart. That's because it's combining two of the windrows from the mower into one. So that saves time and effort on bailing, so I have less trips to make. And then it also takes less uh, wear and tear on my, mo on my baler and my tractor. So it's a very handy tool and it's very convenient. And today, you're going to see this young gentleman raking for me 
he's gonna rake while I get the big tractor out and I start bailing behind him. There it is, folks. That is actually the first four foot tall, five foot wide bale we have ever made. We're actually going to this because of the barn that you guys have seen us building. We want it to be where it's easier and lighter. Basically, it, it, it's all about the spacing in there. There's not a lot of room, so we don't want a five by five bale because it's gonna take up more space. A four foot tall bale because we're gonna set it on the end. So that would be flipped up will take up a little less space and it'll give them more room in their pen. So that's, we're gonna try that this year, but we're also gonna try, I'm gonna make one five by five as well and we'll compare them and see what we like. But we figured that it's easier just to make smaller ones and have to change them more often and figure out that, oh hey, a bigger one will work. Then I make a bunch of big ones and be like, oh, this isn't gonna work, we gotta make them smaller. I have to open them up and knock a bunch off to fit it in the pens. So that's why we're making them smaller.
you see here is I'm actually putting the tractor in park. The PTO is still running because right before I put the tractor in park, I used the switch that's in my hand to move the tie arm over in the path of the hay. When it goes in the path of the hay, the hay coming into the baler chamber actually draws the twine in as well. Once it draws it in, I swing the arm all the way over. Then I'm going to use the arm, moving it slowly back across the bale to wrap the rest of the bale. Once it gets all the way over, what's going to happen is you're going to see me hop out. There is a cutting mechanism on the baler. However, it does not work. I've bent it back in place a couple of times, but the metal arm is actually just weak from being bent back into place too many times, and it's gotten to a point where once you bend it back, it cuts for one or two times, and then it's got enough pressure put on it that it is bent back to the point where it just won't cut anymore. It doesn't put enough pressure on the twine. Um, the PTO is turned off before I get out to cut the twine, though. I haven't been lucky enough to find a replacement cutter nearby that's cheap. Or even just nearby in general. Now I back up, I back up because the baler doesn't have a kicker, so it's just going to drop it kind of where it's at. So for me to close the door, I have to pull forward a little bit. Well, I've got hay in front of me. Close it. 
So as you can see, this area right here was super thick. But we can't cut some of this because there is a hole right here. It's about two or three feet deep. And it's just, I mean, it's not very big, but it looks like it's hollow underneath in some spots. And so we're kind of afraid to go over here with a 17,000 pound tractor. You know, plus a baler with, you know, up to a thousand pounds worth of hay in it. So what we do is, uh, you know, we cut as close as we can, as you've seen, and then we call that good. And then this area right here is just super wet and we can't really get into it. It has a, I guess an underground spring or something. Those of you who don't know, anytime you ever go back there, and I mean anytime, you need to turn the PTO off. All it takes is to catch your shirt, a rip right here, your ring on your face, anything, and it grabs it and it'll start wrapping around. Your body weight, even if you weigh 300 pounds, is not going to stop that PTO. So always, always remember that. Don't ever go back there and play around by a PTO with it on. And with that, that's it for us for bailing. Um, I'll do a video of bail count and then how disappointed we may or may not be. But other than that, have a great night and have a blessed week and we'll see you next time. Just in case you were wondering what bailing in the 80s looked like, this is pretty much it.